I've been sent this Sanyao K13 100 chuck. When I listened to it first of all, it sounded a bit rough and it also felt a little bit rough. So I decided to take it apart and have a look inside and see whether I could make some improvements to the engineering of the chuck. I removed the retaining plate from the back of the chuck and then I started to disassemble the rest of the chuck by removing the three pinion retaining bolts and also the pinions themselves. I noticed there was quite a few rough edges on the chuck, both inside and outside. There also seemed to be some sort of grit inside the chuck. Whether this was grinding dust or something else, I'm not quite sure. And I also found small pieces of swarf inside the chuck as well. Of course, none of this is going to help to make it run smooth. I tapped out the scroll from the back of the chuck using a brass bar and a soft face hammer and then a few gentle taps and the scroll dropped free from the chuck. So the scroll was removed from the chuck and it had a few sharp edges and it felt a bit gritty too so I put that to one side ready for cleaning. The top face of the chuck also had a few issues. The edges, although they'd been ground, they were still quite rough. On a plus point, it came with this nice little spring-loaded ball bearing oiler. The outside of the chuck, the pinion holes had been finished quite well, but the very edges of the slides where the jaws go in were quite rough as well. The edges had been ground up okay, but unfortunately it just hadn't been finished off properly. The same goes for the jaws. Although the front faces seem to have been ground quite well, the back edges were simply a wire erosion finish. The surface faces were quite clean and the grooves to go into the chuck seemed a little bit rough on the outside but nothing that a diamond file shouldn't be able to sort out. The chucks were all numbered with the corresponding positions on the right hand side and a serial number, all of which matched with the other jaws. The back retaining plate was also a little bit rough in the casting and the machining hadn't quite removed all of the casting defects. The chuck came with three M8 25mm retaining bolts and when screwed into the back of the chuck the holes were quite clean and they screwed down and left approximately 6mm from the surface. My back plate was going to be 10mm thick so this gave me enough clearance for the holes. The overall dimensions of the chuck were 112mm across the front 58 millimeters across the side. The jaws themselves were an impressive 60 millimeters long and approximately 45 millimeters in width. The jaws fitted the chuck reasonably well and slid in quite easily and once they were inserted there was 47 millimeters of clearance from the front face of the chuck to the end of the jaws. The jaws slid into the chuck reasonably well although there was still evidence of a slight wobble towards the top. I placed all of the components in some paraffin and left it overnight for a good soak to remove all oil residues. The next day I removed the parts from the paraffin wash and gave them all a good clean and wipe over. I took care of all the sharp edges on the chuck with a standard needle file and this took a while as you can imagine as there are six jaws on this chuck. The chuck is not made from hardened steel, but it certainly felt a bit harder than your average mild steel. Most of the edges for the slots of the jaws were also quite sharp, but again a flat needle file seemed to sort out these edges quite well. I didn't file any of the flat surfaces of the chuck, as obviously these are ground to suit the jaws, so here I was just filing the very sharp edges off. I did exactly the same with the retaining plate for the back as the cutouts themselves had been milled and sharp edges again were left. Any other burrs and defects were also removed in this way. Any holes in the chuck which had rough edges were simply taken care of with a small hand countersink bit. The scroll was hardened and therefore a normal file wouldn't touch it. And if you have a close look, you'll be able to see there's quite a few rough edges on the scroll. This is what could have been causing a lot of the problems. The rough edges in the scroll proved to be problematic. So I used a small triangular diamond file 
and slowly worked my way around the entire scroll on both edges. And a final finish on some wet and dry sandpaper finished the job. And now you can see that although it's not perfect, the edges are a lot cleaner than they were when it came out of the chuck. The scroll pinion and the pinions themselves looked like they'd simply been milled and again the finish wasn't particularly great. There were a few rough edges here and there. First of all, I went round the edge with my diamond file and cleaned up any burrs that were left on the edge of the scroll. Then, using my triangular diamond file again, I slowly went round the entire scroll, cleaning up any rough edges that remained. Again, as you can imagine, this took quite a while. I then gave it all a final wash in the paraffin to remove any of the diamond dust or swarf which I had created from filing. And as you can see from when I drained the paraffin out, there was quite a residue which was left behind. I then gave all the components a good blast of air and a clean up with a rag. So now time for reassembly. A little bit of light oil was added just to aid assembly and then all the components were put back together in reverse order. Some more light oil was added to the pinion and the scroll and I also added oil to all the screw holes. I then flipped it over and one by one reinserted the jaws. It certainly felt a lot better after a good clean up. I still had a few concerns as they seemed to wobble around quite a lot at the top and also when the chuck was tightened up it was evident that not all the jaws were actually making contact with each other. The jaws still seemed to wobble around quite a bit and even when they were pinched up with the chuck key there was still one jaw which never quite touched all the others. I tried adding a short piece of silver steel bar and pinched up the chuck. But again one of the jaws still remained to be loose, although this time it was a different jaw. I then discovered that if you work your way around and tighten up the other two jaws you can still feel a little bit of slack within the pinion, so I tightened up all three jaws to see if that made any difference. It did indeed stop the jaws from wobbling. The very top surfaces of the jaws, when pulled in together, were also very slightly uneven. The retaining plate was put back in. I then used an oil slipstone just to flatten off where the dimple was made when I used my centre punch. I did notice, however, after the chuck had been cleaned up, that there were already two spots that had been marked on the chuck for alignment. These again were then stoned off to make sure that the chuck was flat at the back. A few measurements were made just to check the accuracy and to be fair it was pretty good. So there's the chuck all nice and clean and running much sweeter than it was previously. All I need to do now is make a back plate for it to mount on the lathe. A cast iron back plate was bought from RDG Tools and the first thing I wanted to do was make sure that it mated nice and squarely on my lathe mandrel. So I blued up the mating faces and the back plate was screwed onto the mandrel just to check alignment. All seemed pretty good. I then took one of my fibre washers which have been specifically made to prevent chucks from seizing on the mandrel. If you'd like to see how these are made, please have a look for my press tour video. The back plate was then mounted back onto the lathe and firmly tightened. The back plate was first of all turned down to 112mm diameter and the front of it was faced off until it was within about 20 thou proud of the mandrel spindle. The chuck was turned down to suit the recess in the back of the chuck. It was measured and a final cut was taken before a test fit could be made. I centre punched the first dot and then, using my dividers, divided it up into three. I then centre dotted those marks. The holes in the faceplate were then drilled out to size to suit the screws. The three 8mm screws were added and gently torqued up. The chuck was now all ready for mounting on the lathe. 
So the chuck was tightened onto the lathe mandrel and the first thing I did was added a half inch silver steel ground bar. First of all I tried to see whether there was any preference on which pinion to use the chuck key in. First of all I tried number one and just gently nipped it up with finger pressure. This gave me a run out of around four to five thou which was slightly disappointing. I then tried it in pinion number two and again this was around four thou out as well. So I hope that pinion number three might give me a better result. But it was about the same. Again, fourth thou run out. At this point, I was a little bit disappointed and I thought, how am I going to correct for this? And then it hit me. If you remember earlier in the video, I had a wobbly jaw and I did find that by rotating the chuck around and tightening all three of the pinions, it actually removed this wobble from the chuck. So I thought I'd try it again. So I tightened them up in order, one, two, and three, with just gentle finger pressure. Bingo. The chuck was actually now running at approximately one and a half thou out. I thought I'd try and confirm my results. So I got another piece of silver steel, the biggest one I had, which was five eighths of an inch. Again, the results were impressive. Around one thousandth of an inch run out. I then tried a smaller bar, this time a piece of 8mm ground silver steel. And again, to my pleasant surprise, the chuck only ran out about one thou. I also tried it further down, with the piece of silver steel sticking out of the chuck about 100mm. This ran out about two and a half thou, which isn't bad for 100mm sticking out the chuck. So you may be wondering, what is the purpose of this six jaw chuck? Well, the fact that it has six jaws means you can hold things with a lot less pressure. Especially things like thin wall tube, which can be quite fragile and prone to getting crushed by a three jaw chuck. The purpose of this chuck having six jaws and longer reach jaws means that there is less pressure exerted on the outside of the tube, but still gives a good grip. The other attribute of this chuck is its non-marking capability. The fact that you don't have to tighten the chuck up quite so tight means that you get less marking on already finished pieces of work or highly polished surfaces. Here the tube was held very lightly in the chuck and I thought I'd do some just fine cuts just to see if there was any slippage and damage to the actual surface. But as you can see, it came out still highly polished. I got the same results from using copper. This is a piece from a boiler that I'm building. And again, the jaw left no marks at all. Another benefit, of course, is how much of the workpiece you can hold in the chuck. In this case, it was gripping it 90 millimeters to the back of the chuck. The maximum diameter of stock you can use in the chuck is around 32 millimeters, which is one and a quarter inches. Any wider than this and you're getting a little bit too close to the edge of the scroll with the teeth on the jaws. Of course the chuck is perfectly suited for just general turning, but the advantage of the six jaws means you can hold more fragile items easily. Here for instance, I'm using some thin plastic tube and it held it nice and firmly whilst cutting. Of course other fragile things could be seen as threads. The last thing you want to do is damage a finished thread in the chuck and sometimes you do need to chuck up something with a thread. I tried it on some brass, some copper and a steel bolt. The nut screwed on perfectly afterwards. And just to run it through its paces, I tried some other softer materials. Here's a piece of wood. Here's a brass cylinder that I'm making and none of these came out marked. And of course the chuck is ideally suited for turning hexagon stock. And one other possible use, I might actually now be able to use this accidental eBay purchase I bought of a 32mm ripper cutter. It'll be nice to finally actually try out this bad boy.